What's going on guys? Cody from Motorcycle MD, and in this video we'll be going after tank cleaning. Ah yes, the old cafe racer, the old barn find, the old whatever. The tank's junk, right? It's full of varnish, full of rust, who knows? There are a number of different ways to do this. There are different scenarios, there are different amounts of rust, different amounts of varnish. Is it just varnish? Is it just rust? Is it a collaboration of them both? Well, we're going to go through a little time lapse slash informational video uh, as I clean the tank out on this 900F, okay? Very low mile tank. The paint is immaculate, but they let it sit. And varnish has pretty much sealed the entire bottom layer, sides, and top of the tank. So we're going through a couple of steps, actually probably four or five different steps that I take personally to get a tank at a place where I can use it, where I can run it, where I can trust it. The only real deal treatment that I've seen people do, as you guys have probably heard, is sealing the tank with a red coat or whatever. That's a completely different process and we may do that in another video, but this is to get to the tank to where it's usable with some slight variations of how we should treat the tank after we have cleaned it and treated it and done all this stuff. But you want to ride. You want to get the tank in a place where you can set yourself up for success when it comes to properly cleaning out the tank. So, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys at the end. Later. Alright guys, so welcome to the CB900F tank. A little look inside. You can see that there is quite a bit of rust that's built up. A lot of varnish down by the corners and that just the gas that's just dried up and kind of solidified in a way. Um, the very first process I usually take is when it's something like this is with a very, very low acid controlled substance. Something like uh, distilled vinegar is what I use here grab about five gallons. We want to fill it up to the brim. This is me sucking out the old residue. Um, you see a technique that I use in here quite a bit, which is just trying to puddle or pull everything to one side. Um, we'll use this technique quite a bit. But the main issue with using an acid, a low acid or whatever, um, as a cleaner is that it does etch the metal. Etching the metal is just a term that's used to when you kind of cut into the protective coating of metal um, that's that's inside of tanks and it uh, leaves an imprint on the tank and it no longer is protected. Okay, so that does happen in this video because there's no real other way for me to get that rust out. I could have maybe went straight for another chemical um, which I'll use describe later on in this, but distilled vinegar, it's very low acid. I can really cut into that rust and get it all to kind of break free. And I use about five gallons of that stuff, rotating it. I would, I'm not showing this in the video, but I'd rotate it and get it up onto its end, pull it up to the top. The very most important section of the tank that people miss the most is the very top layer, which is part of my hands on right now, like that top coating. It's hard to get to, and we got to make sure that that gets out of there. Um, as you see here, I'm starting to bring it out of the tank, um, bring it all forward. I will shake it around a little bit. There's some, like I said, there's a thousand different methods methods people use. They can drop brand new stainless washers inside of there, or bolts, and kind of mix it around. And they use fish gravel or all different types. That's awesome. That technique may work for you. This is just what I'm going to do. Fill it up. I think I let this sit for about almost two full days. I checked in day one, rotating it constantly. Um, about every maybe six hours, I'd rotate it to a, di a different location, shake it around. I'm really still trying to bring all the sediment, all the stuff that's being flaked and freed to the front of the tank to where I can access it with some type of hand pump. I'm going to bring it all back out again. And the cool part is, is that distilled vinegar is usable still. But again, that's the goal. Bring everything up front and suck out as much material as you can. Um, that's going to save you in, in the long run um, when it gets towards the, the finishing steps that I use. But the fuel valve was junk. Okay, but I like to leave that in there because I don't, I don't have to seal the bottom with like some type of cork or anything like that. I can just use the old fuel valve over and over and over again. Even when I go to a different compound, same thing. Okay, this is me just trying to grab that fuel filter out of there. Nose pliers, you can kind of work the ends left and right and 
eventually just yank it all out of there. But there were some bits in that tank for sure, because that fuel filter was not cold. Now this sounds pretty disgusting, now that I'm listening to it. But you can see the debris that I'm pulling out of that thing. There's tons of it in there, okay? And the more fluid that you have down the bottom when you're using the hand pump that I'm using, I'll put the tools that I have down in the, in the description, but using that hand tool is really helpful for bringing out that big material. And this is a little nighttime session of me just filling the tank over and over and over again of water. Um, this helps get a lot of, of the debris out again, and it's better to do it in the daytime because then you can actually see the material and the effect that's coming out of the tank. It's a lot of particles and big flakes. I'm gonna use a little cardboard box. Using a piece of carpet works good too, but I had to do it at night. I was on a time crunch, so just, I flushed it probably four or five times with the hose, even using like a jet stream in some cases just to kind of break up any other material that was in there. Now I'm sucking it right back out again with the same method, bringing anything up front with the water that was still in there and dumping it into some type of bucket. And now, what I'm going to do is just dry the tank out, shoving rags down inside the front cavities of, of the tank, because there is a tunnel in the center. So we have really have to work with the left and the right side. And I'm shaking it around, trying to get all of the water and moisture out of that tank. There are chemicals or products that you can use, like yeet, that gets water. I'm not really sure how it works, but there are products to help gather water into a location. This is what the tank looked like after I used the vinegar. That's called flash rust right there. Um, after the tank is dried, moisture hits it, it flash rusts. So I go through two different popular metal restoring or remover products. I had to wait for the metal rescue for me to bring it home um, from the shop. But I will say that I'm a big fan of metal rescue. Okay, I'm also a big fan of evapo rust. I've cleaned tanks with metal rescue and I've cleaned tanks with evapo rust. I use metal rescue on this next image that you'll see. I actually was not able to get footage of me using metal rescue. Who cares? But this was the aftermath of using the metal rescue. Okay, and it looks pretty darn good. But I've seen metal rescue do better, and I want to say that the reason why it didn't work as well as I was hoping it would, which you can still see there's, there's some rust spots there, was because it, it was an old batch. Um, it was not a brand new batch of Metal Rescue that I used. You see that's just fluid down at the bottom for me sucking a Metal Rescue out of there. It did a good job though, and Metal Rescue does has some, have some inhibitors that help with flash rusting, which is what we experienced with the distilled vinegar. All right, but the next series of stuff is just me using the evapo rust. This is me taking now. It looks like I'm taking the evapo rust out. I wanted to give the evapo rust a chance to see if I can get rid of those smaller spots of rust that we saw in that last footage. Um, I love eva evapo rust. I can't say that one's better than the other, but I'm a big fan of evapo rust for sure. Um, but a fresh set of, um, it, it, like I said, it really all depends on the condition of the tank. Certain applications calls for certain liquids or chemicals to remove that rust. I've cleaned tanks with straight up 50-50 muriatic acid in some cases that were so bad. Um, I'll tell you what, a really good video that I saw was from Shane Connolly um, on coating the tanks. That is the best thing for you to do is to coat a, a rusted tank after you've cleaned it. He has a great video. Um, I'll put it in the description um, just to give him a little shout. Um, he did one a while ago. Um, dude's got a gold mine for videos. And he did one on, I think it was a, a maybe an old Ducati or something like that. I don't know. But coated the tank. He had some products to share with you guys. I really like that process. Um, and if I had uh, more time with this tank and uh, I felt that it was needed and the customer wanted to do it, then I would have ran with the coat. But I'm going to show you guys, you know, a lot of people are not looking to do that. They just want to quick clean, get the bike going, maybe throw some filters on there, and this, that's the process. So now what I'm doing is I am running uh, two-stroke gas oil mix through this. This is how I'm, like, kind of 
cleaning it out. Alright, these are kind of my final stages of getting all of the debris, any debris that I can possibly find in there, before I dry the tank completely to see how it turns out. Which, in the next series of videos here in a minute, um, it's back to me talking uh, with the camera. But two-stroke oil and gas mixed just to flush the tank. This is me shaking the tank violently, trying to get it all to one side, bring it to that uh, bung, see if anything, any loose sediment down at the bottom, and again, sucking it out with the strainer. Okay, now, I'm going to dry it all out again. Brand new rags, clean rags, shoving them down in the corners, bringing that fluid up to the front, um, and allowing the, because the gas evaporates pretty quick, and the oil in the gas really helps to kind of, I believe, coat the tank and give it the best possible chance, and that's, we'll get to that here soon but keep using fresh rags you can use paper towels though but paper towels tend to break up so maybe use uh the non-terrible rags like the uh not microfiber but the ones that are lint lint free yeah lint free rags so enough of me talking into this microphone let's go back to uh some actual footage hopefully helping you guys out the cool thing about the two-stroke oil and the gas is it kind of helps uh, and provides a barrier for the tank for what I've seen uh, being effective for the metal creating some kind of barrier. Now, whenever you clean a tank and it's bad and it's, there's rust and there's varnish and you've gone through all different types of cleaning, muriatic acids and high, high acidity stuff and solutions, your tank then becomes high maintenance, okay? If you're not going to coat it effectively, I mean perfectly, Coating is not as easy as it sounds. Ma doing a perfect coat job on the inside of it is effective. But if you're not going to do that, your tank now becomes high maintenance, okay? The reason why I say that is because you now have to constantly be in the mindset of keeping your tank from flash rusting. Um, leaving your tank empty after multiple four or five tanks of gas going through your bike. Um, if you put an inline fuel filter in, in the system which I would advise, a new petcock, a new petcock filter and a new inline filter, you're going to see that over time sediment will build up, rust, dust, particles from you letting the, the tank sit empty or, hill, or it sitting half full and this kind of this and that. Running, adding a thimble or a shot of two-stroke oil to your full tank of gas is not going to damage your bike. Okay? We're talking about a very minute amount of oil that is supposed to be burned in a two-stroke bike. It's, it's not going to harm your system. If you run a high oil mixed gas, you will. You will likely carbon up the cylinder a lot faster than normal and the list goes on. But adding a little, you know, a little shot glass or a thimble full of, um, actually that's two kind of big differences, but you get the picture to your oil or to your gas every now and then, every couple of tanks is what I would say would be the best route. Um, even then, it's, it's high maintenance. If, if you're going to store the bike for over the winter, four or five months, fill the tank up full of gas. I don't even care if you use two-stroke oil or not. Fill it up. The more that you can keep that, that metal on the inside uh, covered with some kind of fluid, not water, but fluid like gas, which is a petroleum product, will help you. Okay, so I say all of that to say that now we've reached the phase where the tank is completely dry. Okay, it's I the pockets that did have excess fluid in it, I shoved towels and rags in there and I changed them out frequently to kind of soak that all up and I let the tank sit and just dry completely. So what that does, which is cool, is that it everything that was floating in the tank or that was in the fluid or whatever is now dried and now I can hear it and it sounds like a lot it's because it's a lot of crap in there even through all the soaking all the tanks I just want to stop this for a minute did you hear that that's a tremendous amount of powder and particles left over and this is what people miss is you think that you're sucking all this debris out and I did it four or five times you know with water with treatments with gas with gas mixes and constantly sucking it out even after it's all dried and said and done still tons of stuff inside the tank and this is what people miss this is what 
you don't realize is still left in the tank. It's it's very misleading when it goes to looking inside the tank. Like, oh man, look how clean it looks now. Let's run it. And that's where you mess up. That's where your carbs get destroyed. And you, a month later or a week later, your idle jets get clogged up. Or three days later even. You drop a bowl on a brand new set of clean carbs after you've done all the process of cleaning the tank out. And you find tons of sediment in the bottom of the bowl. It's because you did not take enough time to really go through the process of making sure that it's all gone. And I was pretty amazed at how much was left over there too. I mean, I started sucking out f fluid that had nothing in it. I was running it into like a white pail and the fluid was clear. After I let it all dry, after it's all said and done, there's still a very last process that I take. Um, full cleaner. I still have a rag in there, check that out. There's still crap in there, okay? And that's what people leave behind and then ruin their carb job or whatever. So, what I do is we gotta get that crap out, obviously. I'm, I'm brand new uh, petcock valve for, with it, new, new filter. Just realized I was not in that shot the whole time. No problem. Now what we'll do is we will take the dust particles that's in there. The metal looks great. I mean, it looks, it looks awesome. Right, there's no flash rust on it. I think I try to put some pictures up for you guys. I mean, if there is, it's very, very small. It's it's a totally runnable tank. I I'd run it. So what I have to do is take that sediment, and now we're gonna try to isolate it to just one side. Okay, just one side. That's where that's where we want it. Okay, this kind of. Hit it, get it all to one side, okay? Kind of bring that up front. All right, now, because of the tunnel, it's pretty much all located in this front left section. All right, shop vac. Obviously your shop vac hose will not fit down in the tank Gas fill spigot, but there are a couple of ways we can get around that. The best one that I found is a big hose, okay? Like a half inch diameter hose. But it's pretty big. It's all I got, and that's why I'm using it. So you can, I mean, you can spend the time if you want and take this, put this in there. And you can duct tape that if you want or seal this off so it's only sucking from this little restricted hose. But turn the vacuum on and we're going to take this and go right down into that corner and try to drag this along the bottom and suck all that stuff out. And we're going to keep shaking it, keep tapping on it until we don't hear anything else. Because this tank is dry, there's no fluid in it, there's no moisture in it, there shouldn't be. Um, so we're going to suck all that debris out. And this is really the last thing that I'll do. I may do one more small flush, but going out to that fuel filter may be in your future in the next year or two. Okay. Now again, this is the way that I have done it. This is how this is a process that seems most efficient to me. We're not crushing the metal that's inside of there with a uh, very heavy acid but I've used straight up muriatic acid on some tanks to get them clean. I've done many other versions of this where I've tried this solution and that solution and these combinations of solutions to kind of get the tank where I need it to be but again it's still a risk. It's still a risk once the tank's like that man it's really hard to come back from it unless you coat it properly. Metal Rescue claims to have uh, an inhibitor inside of it. Um, other companies do as well. Look into that, do your research. If it fails, try something else, okay? I've run this tank and I feel confident that it will be okay as long as I direct this information to the customer saying, hey, if I were you, I'd run this type of mix, maybe a little bit of two-stroke oil every now and then, not on every tank, but every now and then to kind of help delay the, the, the inevitable. Because if I were to fill that tank up with gas and run 700 to 1,000 miles through of of gas through it and let the tank sit and then just dry out over time, it's gonna look 20 times worse. Moisture is the killer, obviously. 
I hope that someone out there finds this helpful. If you have a great method and you wanna share it, man, post it in the comments. Say, hey, this worked best for me. I had a tank that was completely destroyed with varnish, and this is what I used. Man, post it in the comments. I'd love to hear from it. I'm sure other people will as well. This is just the method that I've used. To me, it seems like it is um, the most environmentally friendly because I can reuse many of the products that I use, like the vinegar and the Evapor Rust and the Metal Rescue. I can, I can reuse all that stuff multiple times. And I did minimal damage to the metal on the inside of the tank because anything that I used, the only thing that I used that had a very, very low acid base would be the vinegar. That's why it took like two to three days to soak it. So that's it. I'm gonna slap the fuel valve on this, uh, do some quick drains, make sure that nothing's, no weird stuff's coming out of, out of the fuel valve, make sure it's not leaking, and then we're gonna run this thing. I can finally give this gorgeous 900F back to the customer after a full fork rebuild, full brake rebuild, full carb rebuild, which is coming out. Tank flush, I mean, he's ready to ride it, okay? So as always, be sure to join the mailing list so that you get updates on videos that come out. Hope you guys are enjoying the new collaboration series that I've been doing with Matt over at How To Motorcycle Repair. If you haven't seen any of those, check them out. You guys may be used to me doing live streams. I've collaborated with Matt. Um, he's a great guy and uh, I enjoy talking to him and I hope you guys enjoyed the sessions that we have together because I know I am. And we'll probably be pumping out episodes maybe once a week even um, to tackle as many questions as we can. Thank you guys for all the emails that you've been sending to that. It's been a lot of fun. So until then, Cody from Motorcycle MD, bringing you guys some helpful tips and tricks for your next build or your daily rider. See you guys next time. Later.